China's tech stocks are surging after the government released a plan to expand the use of AI. The State Council has set a target for 2027, saying by that stage, 70% of China's economy should be using intelligent devices and AI agents. Now, the move is boosting companies like Cambricon, which makes the chips that power AI systems. Our correspondent, Michael Marillia, has joined us on set. And, Michael, just tell us a little bit more about these guidelines. Yes, yeah, so, so this is an initiative called AI Plus, which the Chinese government is using to really supercharge the AI sector and the use of AI. And we've seen Chinese tech, tech stocks really doing well uh, on the uh, market uh, today. But the story goes beyond just this initiative which the government is uh, proposing. And if you really want to see where it started, you've got to take a look at Cambricon's share price over the last six months. So let's take a look at that. And as you can see, if we go back to the beginning of the year, we're looking at a share price of 646 yuan, which is about $90. And it's more than doubled since then, climbing all the way up to 1385 which is about $165 to $170 on Monday, so August 25th. The reasons behind that, well, it seems like there is a push within the AI sector to source chips made in China. That's because of concerns about securing chips from the United States. We know that the Trump administration has placed restrictions and limits on the export of chips from the U.S. to China, and it seems there is now a push to get local chips. Let's take a quick look at the impact of that on Cambricon's results. Some brilliant numbers over the last six months. $403 million in terms of revenue. That's more than 4,000% higher than the same period the year before. So clearly this push within China's tech sector to get locally made chips is paying off for companies like Cabricon. Jeff? Well, I presume this is great news for Chinese chip makers, isn't it? Well, absolutely. And you have to consider as well that they are up against a giant in the form of NVIDIA. And we must stress we have a long way to go. Uh, until we can say that these Chinese chip makers are the same size as NVIDIA. Let's take a look at some of the numbers for NVIDIA. And uh, you'll see here, these figures are just for the first quarter of the year. Revenue of $44 billion, so really massive. And just over a month ago, we got the news that NVIDIA had reached a market capitalization of $4 trillion, making it the biggest company on the planet. So, Cambricon has a long way before it gets to that point, but, but if we take a look at NVIDIA's journey over the last couple of years, we may get some clues as to what could happen to Chinese chip makers. You'll remember that OpenAI released ChatGPT in early 2023, and that gave NVIDIA a huge boost. It really uh, set it on a course for massive, massive Growth. So we were looking at $17.84 in terms of the video, NVIDIA share price at the beginning of 2023. It's now 10 times higher. August 26th, so Tuesday, it was above $181. So Chinese chip makers will be hoping that this AI plus initiative by the government and this attempt to source chips locally will set it on a similar path, a similar growth trajectory to what we've seen with NVIDIA. Sally, Jeff? Michael, thank you very much indeed for that. Well, let's bring in Santosh Rao, Head of Research and a partner at Venture Capital Group Manhattan Venture Partners. Now, uh, Santosh, uh, I mean, this is astonishing what's happening uh, with Cambricon. Um, I think we might have a slight problem with our guest. No, I'm being told he's with us. Uh, Santosh, sorry about that. Um, we're hearing it's not yet at the levels of NVIDIA, but is this the beginning of massive growth for Cambricon in your view? Yes, uh, uh, thanks for having me and great to see you. Well, I think this is an incremental positive. 
like your earlier uh, uh, speaker said, you know, it's it, it's still early. It's a long way to go. NVIDIA is very well established. It's deep in its innovation curve. And uh, the, uh, the this one will need to catch up there. But this is a great positive, And that's where this was expected. Because uh, just looking at the U.S.'s policy on exports and the technology curves, I think China was going to do it and is doing it now. And now they have their own in, uh, ingrown chips, which is great. Uh, but it's going to take some time. I mean, the NVIDIA chips are way advanced. The technology, they're vertically integrated with the software that they have. Uh, so I think uh, that all that will take some time for the company to develop. But they are definitely moving in the right direction. It's going to help the uh, Chinese companies, China, help the ecosystem, uh, the AI ecosystem in China. So all that is good. So I think net-net, the headline is very good, good development, but expected, nothing, not surprising. It was expected that they would go this way. And what does it mean for other chip makers in the Chinese market? I'm thinking for Huawei, for example. Are they going to be on a similar trajectory? Uh, yes, everyone will try to uh, emulate that. The, the whole push by the government is to get be independent. Just move away from dependence on the Western or the developed uh, technologies and develop in-house. So you will see a... It'll, it'll help, it'll spread, and it'll be good for everyone there. And that's how it is. I mean, you saw it here. NVIDIA gave rise to AMD, to uh, other stuff, other companies, to uh, for forgetting the name, uh, Broadcom. So all these companies will come out different variations of the AI chips, uh, whether it's specialized chips or just uh, LLM chips, broader uh, purpose chips. So I think you will see a whole ecosystem develop around this. But the fact that you can do it in-house, that's a great vote of confidence that uh, really helps to push the needle forward uh, in the right direction. How long do you think it would be before China has its own AI hub? Because that's the ultimate goal, isn't it? A, a system that is currently very globally interwoven, uh, that countries like America and China have pretty independent chip hubs. Yes, it's going to take some time. Uh, the speed at which it's growing is amazing. The uh, technology development and the know-how that's going into it, it's just moving at super fast speed. It's going to take some time, and there's a lot of catching up to do, but it's de it's definitely on the right track, right trajectory. Uh, I would say if I had to look at looking at the timelines of every other thing, uh, probably two or three years to really get a fully integrated, self-sufficient, uh, very reliant, very capable very high-powered GPUs and all that. So I think it'll take some time. But they'll get there at mm. some point. Uh, and uh, we'll see where. Like we saw with DeepSeek and we saw with the other ones. They will catch up. They will come there. Uh, but it's going to take some time because the uh, U.S. is way ahead. It's a deep technology and uh, the, the, the compute power of the chips, of American chips, is very fast, very high. Yeah. Uh, and uh, China will catch up at some point. Of course, NVIDIA is the big guy. And we're expecting their results later today. What's the sentiment on the markets? Well, the sentiment is that demand is there, supply is there, they will have a beat and race quarter. The only issue is what is priced into the stock already. Uh, that's the whole issue. The, as far as their performance is going to be, it's very good. Uh, I, I expect a good quarter. Uh, because uh, looking at the data points out there and looking at some reports out there but analysts who cover it very closely, uh, the demand and supply is very good. Uh, so th so I am, I am expecting a good quarter. But the main thing I'm looking for is the commentary in terms of what they are seeing in terms of the demand out there. And uh, because supply is there, it's the demand out there. Is it saturated? Is it still growing? And those are the things that we'll be looking for in terms of uh, where NVIDIA is right now. Well, thank you so much. Santosh Rao, Head of Research and a partner at Venture Capital Group Manhattan Venture Partners.